Did you know you could have three separate disability ratings for your knee? You have one for instability, one for flexion, one for extension at 30%. That's just your left leg. Now do it times two, right? Do the same thing in your uh, right leg. So 30, 30, 30 plus 30, 30, 30. Then you're going to get the bilateral factor of about 5.2% or so. And since they changed the rating criteria, you could also get something for shin splints. How many ratings can a veteran get for their knees? Well, when a veteran comes to me and their knees are all messed up, then I try to go for a max of three ratings in each knee. So flexion, extension, and instability. So that's six ratings because you have two knees. So flexion is just the flexing of the knee, just bending. So some limitation in that. And then the opposite would be extension. So that would be the knee straightening out and having some limitation in that. Okay. And then the other one would be instability. So basically the knee gives out on you. Uh, there can be an extreme form of instability called subluxation. And we'll uh, show that a little bit in a minute. And then, uh, so those are the, the three ratings. So basically limitations in the way that it's supposed to move flexion and extension, and then some extra movement in a plane of motion that's not supposed to be there. Okay. okay. So those are the, the three main ratings for the knee. You mentioned the extension. So um, one term yeah. um, that I've kind of heard, maybe other people have, is when you hyperextend your knee. So you're actually bending your knee um, yeah. the, the the complete opposite way that it's supposed to bend. Is that what hyperextension yeah. means? Yes. And so you can get a rating for that. We're going to talk about that more a little bit later. I'm going to bust out some Latin on you. Okay. Ooh. Genu recurvatum. Okay, so genu is like knee, recurvatum is like bending the wrong way. So Latin for the knee bending the wrong way. And uh, and so you can get a rating for that. It's uh, usually not worthwhile. And I'll explain that a little bit later. Pardon the interruption. I know this stuff gets kind of confusing. If you have questions for me directly, check out my boot camp. I set it up for you guys so we can communicate versus being in the YouTube comments. Probably what you look like, Craig, in the morning, getting up out of the chair. My sure, glasses on the chair uh, there and the paper. <laughs> well, it's probably more like a, a laptop. These are some pictures out of a textbook. And so what I wanted to show was in the middle row of pictures there. Just kind of, So I'm gonna use osteoarthritis as my illustrative condition today. So. Obviously, you can have lots of different problems in your knees. Osteoarthritis is very, very common. So I'm just going to use that to kind of illustrate a bunch of points. And so what is osteoarthritis? So uh, it's you know degeneration of the joint in general, and then specifically the cartilage uh, gets degenerated. And you start to form these things called osteophytes, which is basically bone, new bone, where there's not supposed to be bone. So it's kind of on the edge of the joint and you can kind of see it in those middle pictures there. It's growing and uh, uh, like it's not smooth along the borders of the bone. Okay, and then um, so the subluxation that I mentioned I was gonna talk about, there's a picture of that in the, la the third row of images there. Uh, there's kind of a, a cartoon depiction of the, obviously the femur is not, over the tibia straight up and down there and then you see the same image on the x-ray so that is subluxation where it's kind of like severe um movement of the joint out of its normal planes okay so getting into the degeneration like what what does that mean what does it mean for it to be degenerating okay this is showing a hip but the same principles apply okay so this is what a nice new joint in like a teenager looks like okay so uh this is you have cartilage that overlies uh the the where, where the bone is you know interfacing in the joint so basically the tip of their femur and then the upper side of your tibia okay so the edges of the bone have cartilage you also have cartilage inside the joint that's called the meniscus so it's got the ends of the bone so you would have cartilage along the bone here and then cartilage in the middle of the joint. That's the meniscus. So I'll, that meniscus kind of sits in there, 
you know, in between the femur and the tibia. This is uh, early changes of degeneration. It's starting to get kind of hairy and it literally is getting kind of hairy. So uh, the cartilage is starting to break down. The bone underneath the cartilage is starting to get thicker. And then over there where it's showing the hip joint, but same principle for the knee joint, the space between the two major bones in the joint is narrowing. And uh, so if we could keep scrolling down, it just keeps getting worse. The cartilage starts breaking off. So you've probably maybe had an arthroscopic surgery on your knee where they went in and they took some stuff out and you're like, how did something get in there? I, di I didn't put it in there. Well, it broke off of your bone. Okay. So, um, and then you can see the bone getting thicker, the joint space continuing to narrow. And then the last picture um, is what we would refer to as in stage arthritis. So there's almost no cartilage left on the bones. Uh, the bone is starting to look all messed up with cysts in it. And then, um, the, and there's almost no space in the joint anymore. So this is what people refer to as bone on bone. Okay. Okay. So that that's arthritis in a nutshell. How does the VA actually give you a percentage? And so we're going to look at the old document first. Uh, and there's that genu recurva tomb that I was talking about. So you can get 10% for that. Uh, if basically you're, if your knee hyperextends, so that's that. I lined out some stuff that got changed, so don't pay attention to stuff that's lined out. Okay, so I'm not going to talk too much about ankylosis. What that word means is that your joint is ankylosed or fixed, okay? Like it, it's like bent permanently, okay? Uh, kind of rare, okay? Because if you're in that situation, then they'll just replace your knee, okay? okay. So you don't really see those ratings that often. So I'm not going to talk about them. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the part that's lined out the instability that got changed. So we're going to talk about that in the next couple pages, the stuff that stayed the same. Okay. Didn't change in February would be the ratings for cartilage five, two, five, eight. You can get a 20% for that. Or if your cartilage is removed, you can get a 10% rating. So you might be wondering like, okay, they removed my cartilage. Isn't that worse? Well, no. Once they remove it, you actually have some relief of your symptoms because when the cartilage is in there and it's all, you know, kind of gumming up the works, you get all kinds of, uh, you know, clicking and locking and pain and stuff as they describe there. So, so moving on to the really important ratings, 5260 and 5261. Okay. So 5260 is flexion. And 5261 is extension. So you can get up to a 30% rating on flexion, but you got to be pretty darn limited on flexion. Uh, and then for extension, they have a, numerous ratings there. They have six of them. And you can get up to a 50% rating, okay, that you, you know, basically you can't straighten your leg. Now, okay, so you're probably wondering, like, like, how in the heck would I ever get a 50% rating for extension? Or, you know, I did my CMP exam and all I got was, you know, zero or 10% for flexion. So this really comes down to a big difference uh, it, between active and passive range of motion. I'm going to discuss that in detail later on. Okay, because it makes a big difference. Active range of motion is basically measuring your range of motion under load. Okay. Uh, like with weight or resistance and then passive would be like you're, you know, you're just kind of moving your joint without any resistance. Well, as you can imagine, there's a big difference between those two things. And, so and that's just how to you illustrate yeah. that or just to clarify that point. Yeah. I yeah. understand it, but it's worth uh, sticking on this. So yes. active is being wearing a backpack or whatever. And then yeah. um, passive, you said. Yeah. Passive. Uh -huh. So that's me sitting on the doctor's table with no load yep. at all or. Right. With, with nothing, you know, just just re, in a kind of a relaxed state. So that's a huge distinction. Yes. A huge distinction. And it's my, um, uh, you know, it, personal experience of attending C&P exams for myself and talking to hundreds of veterans uh, who have described their C&P exams to me that C&P examiners often, almost always only do passive range of motion. They make 
no attempt to do active range of motion. And they're actually required by a court precedential decision to do so. And actually by a regulation, uh, 38 CFR 4.59. Now, I'm not telling you to like get in a, you know, a, a verbal sparring match or a fist fight with your CMP examiner because that's not going to be real productive. They generally don't like to be told how to do their job. Uh, and certainly wouldn't want that to affect your rating. What that means is, is that after the CMP exam, you can write a statement or something saying, hey, my CMP examiner didn't do their job. So now we're into the new stuff. And you're like, oh, my gosh, this is a lot of yellow on the screen. And it is. Okay, because they made the instability rating super complicated, in my opinion. Um, so uh, basically, they make it a lot harder uh, to get that 20% or 30% instability rating. It used to be kind of this nebulous, mild, moderate, severe system. And so they've basically defined those. This is the 5257 code. And um, and so this is this is a new part of uh, the 38 CFR uh, 4.71A. So the 30% rating, unrepaired or failed repair of complete ligament tear. Okay. So that's pretty bad. You know, if a surgeon kind of tries to repair your ACL or your uh, PCL and they fail at that or they haven't fixed it yet. I mean, your knee's probably going to be pretty darn unstable and given out on you. And they and so here's an important point. And a medical provider prescribes an assistive device like cane or crutches or a walker and a brace. Okay. So you got to have a lot of stuff going on for that 30% rating that your knees just totally messed up very unstable, and you have to have a cane and a brace. Okay, yep. all right, so that 20% rating, this gets even more complicated. Okay, so it's one of two situations. A, as it reads, is a sprain with an incomplete ligament tear. Okay, okay, that makes sense. It's not torn all the way. Or you have a repaired complete ligament tear. So you tore it completely, but you got it repaired, but you still have some residual instability. And medical medical provider prescribes a brace. You got to have something wrong with a ligament or a bad sprain. And you've been prescribed something, a brace or a cane. And then move in, and then just to make it more complicated, just to cover all their bases. OK, uh, you have an unrepaired or failed repair. So same thing as up in here in the 30 percent. OK, mm -hmm. but the difference is you've been prescribed a cane or a brace. Okay. So it's the difference between both and or. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, just covering all possible situations, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. So moving into the 10% range, uh, we've got a sprain, an incomplete ligament tear, or a complete ligament tear repaired, unrepaired, or failed repair. Okay. That's so that's basically anything. Okay. Yep. Causing persistent instability with no prescription. Okay. So cane or brace. So maybe you went to Walgreens or CVS and bought yourself a cane or a brace, you know, and that helps you a lot. Well, okay. That's not going to help with your rating because it's not prescribed. Now, just because a doctor prescribed from the VA maybe gave you a certain cane or a certain brace and you don't like it. Well, that doesn't mean you have to use that one. You can use the one that you like, but they just did the prescription. What they're talking about here, the important thing is the prescription. Basically, it's in your medical record that a medical provider is telling you to use this device. So uh, so that's basically a very detailed breakdown of the 30-20-10, okay? So what that means is uh, that in, in practical terms, you can get that 10% uh, rating Okay, pretty readily. Okay, like somebody comes to see me uh, and they don't have anything in their medical records for a prescription for a brace or a cane, I can still advocate for them getting that 10% rating because, um, you know, I can say they have a sprain, you know, because uh, that's, that's an important point on that 10% rating. You don't have to have imaging like an MRI 
of a complete ligament tear or an incomplete ligament tear. It could just be a sprain. Yep. Okay. Because maybe you hurt your knee, you know, 10 years ago and now it's unstable. Like it gives out on you, but for whatever reason you have not, you know, required an MRI to diagnose the status of your ligaments, yep. you could still get a rating for instability. That's gotcha. my point. Yep. Okay. So, so they made it kind of complicated, but overall, like from a doctor's perspective, this is actually pretty well done. Okay. Like I, I thought, I pro I thought that the old way of rating, it was probably giving a little too much rating this, you know, is, is kind of like modern medicine here. Okay. So, gotcha. uh, so anyway, uh, so moving into patellar instability, I'm not going to discuss this too much because the, the regular instability, like of the main knee joint, that's pretty darn common patellar instability, not so much. So there's a 30, 20 and 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. It actually has to be diagnosed Okay, which they don't make that distinction up here for the regular one. And so, um, you know, so similar system, surgery, you know, brace and a cane, um, you know, just a mixture of braces and canes and surgery and, and stuff like that. Okay. And then the other thing that changed that I'm just going to briefly mention, uh, but it's important if you have this disease, uh, is code 5262. Uh, and that, that now there's a separate diagnostic code for shin splints, also known as medial tibial stress syndrome, MTSS. So that's the fancy word for it. Okay. So, uh, because this now has its own diagnostic code, that means you can get a separate rating. You, and I'm just going to briefly mention this. It used to be that shin splints would get rated on how they affected the knee or the ankle. And most often, CAP examiners would associate the shin splints with the knee. And so basically, your shin splints would get pyramided up with your whatever problem you had in your knee. Well, now you can get a separate rating for them, which I think is very appropriate because shin splints, you know, don't really really realistically bother your knee or your ankle they bother your shin, your shin right. so you know like like i used to have shin splints so i can speak to this so um and you so probably anyway. have them in your service treatment records i know yeah I have them. a lot of people do at yeah at least eight yeah. or ten times yeah i think pretty much anybody yeah. went through any kind of basic yeah. training or boot camp probably experienced yeah. shin splints at least once yeah so now now uh as far as i can tell you can get a separate rating for that which is i think is pretty cool talk about the knee replacement i'll just do this real quick the big change here basically is that yeah so basically it used to be a year that you would get for a knee replacement now it's four months yep. okay and then just in case you didn't know it used to not really be a year it was actually 13 months Okay. And, and this now is a, the temporary hundred percent, right? Is that that's what right? To? Okay. Yes. 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 The convalescent rating okay. as they call it. So while you're healing up. So basically they, uh, th this in my mind is appropriate. It, it doesn't take a year to heal up from a knee replacement anymore, like with modern surgical techniques. Um, so I think it's appropriate. Um, in case anybody cares, but, uh, so, and then you get, and then, um, you get no matter like like say you had three ratings before for flexion extension and instability those all go away and then you now get a single rating under 5055 which generally speaking is appropriate because you know you've all all of that stuff that was causing those other problems has been replaced and so the, the kind of the minimum rating not kind of the actual minimum rating is 30% so that might represent a reduction. So you might have like a, you know, a 30, a 20, and a 10 for your flexion, extension, and instability ratings. Then you go up to 100 for your knee replacement for five months, the one month in, after the hospital, and then four additional months. And then, and then you go down to 30. YouTube thinks this would be a good video for you to watch right here. If you need a lawyer, if you need medical evidence, vocational expert, or my boot camp, links are in the description.